On my kicker tonight, the third cabinet since the promulgation of the Constitution of Kenya 2010 was named this week. And when President William Ruto unveiled his list of 22 cabinet secretaries on Tuesday, a debate ensued over the domination of the list by politicians, some elected and some defeated aspirants in the last general election. The main question in the debate has always been, should the cabinet be made up of politicians or technocrats? Now, chapter nine of the Constitution outlines the structure of the national executive with Article 152.1 setting the number of cabinet secretaries at not fewer than 14, but not more than 22. Then sabbatical three gives a very specific instruction that reads that a cabinet minister shall not be a member of parliament. Despite this sabbatical, both President William Ruto and his predecessor Uhuru Kenyatta had picked elected members of parliament who then proceeded to resign to join the cabinet. Before 2010, the cabinet was picked entirely from among members of parliament, be they elected or nominated. And in the ongoing debate on the composition of the newly named cabinet, it is very easy to pick the nostalgia of those who fully support the inclusion of many politicians in cabinet. Tonight, I am persuaded to join this nostalgic lot for two reasons only. First, 10 years is sufficient time, even on matters constitution, to assess the merits and demerits, as well as strengths and weaknesses of things such as the current cabinet model as contained in the constitution. Secondly, each naming of cabinet, this being the third in a decade, has always triggered a debate around one pertinent question, which is, does the cabinet represent the face of Kenya? On the model of our cabinet, events as recent as this afternoon point at a, mod a model that has never really lived up to the American style executive contained in chapter nine of the Constitution of Kenya 2010. Earlier today, President William Ruto asked parliament to quote, consider a mechanism in the standing orders to facilitate cabinet secretaries to articulate government agenda, explain policy, and answer questions on the floor of the house. This, the president said, would enhance executive accountability to the people of Kenya through the elected representatives. If effected, this arrangement would partly take parliament back to where it used to be and how it used to work before the promulgation of the Constitution of Kenya 2010. Would the cabinet secretaries in parliament arrangement promote accountability of the executive? If the last 10 years is anything to go by, then the answer would be an emphatic yes. Not many observers would find the cabinet of the last 10 years accountable to the public. The Constitution inadvertently reduced them to unquestioning, insecure, and some of them very arrogant presidential errand boys and girls accountable only to one person and office. It wasn't unusual, for example, for cabinet secretaries to skip or altogether defy parliamentary summons. It has also been suggested, and quite rightfully, that some of them never even transitioned to the public-centered spirit of the office of cabinet secretary. Some are accused of arrogance and impunity with all the frustration pointing at the fact that cabinet secretaries under the current model owe allegiance more to the president than to the public. Then there is a question of the face of Kenya. Under the old constitution, cabinet ministers were picked from among elected members of parliament. This arrangement forced the president into a compulsory duty of balancing his appointments along regional and ethnic lines. A cabinet picked from elected politicians was also an outfit of more secure individuals that included 
self-made leaders that enjoyed such a compelling mandate from the people as to force an arrangement of mutual respect between the president and his cabinet members. Ministers, as they were then known, were authentic representatives of their people in government, and the ministerial flag was seen as a collective rather than personal accomplishment. And with the same questions and concerns, third cabinet down the line, maybe we should have that conversation about our cabinet structure and whether there was need at all to, to appoint ministers or cabinet secretaries from outside parliament. We all know for a start that the initial justification that was the principle of freeing the legislature from the grip of the executive is now on its 10th year as a failed experiment. So why don't we just cut the chase and revert to what worked for us between 1963 and 2010? Just a thought. That is my kicker.